the AFC North. Then what? There's the South, East, and West. Remember what, and again, if you're a little confused about what I did, an XML tag can be what's called an empty tag if there's nothing in, if there's nothing nested inside of it, in which case you can do that. All right. If you want to have something inside of the tag, though, you can't do that. So we're going to have to do that, get rid of that, and then put the actual ending tag down below. All right. Now, the AFC North also has some things underneath it, right? It's going to have a Browns. Now, there's nothing underneath Browns, right? So I can just make this a starting and ending tag all into one. And do the same thing for Steelers. structure is, is the same, I just have to change a bunch of A's to N's. And there's no Browns and Steelers. So, N, 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 N. When I'm done with this in a second here, I'm going to have an XML file that matches the structure of what I drew up on the board. And let's make sure we understand that. Probably neaten up these tags a little bit. Well, actually, they're pretty neat, I think. All right. I have my root node. Well, in fact, we can do this. There's my root node for the NFL. I can expand that. Underneath the NFL is the AFC and NFC. Underneath the AFC is what? AFC North, South, East, and West. And finally, underneath the AFC North is what? The Browns and Steelers. Underneath the NFC is what? North, South, East, and West. And then if there was anything underneath them, we could see it. But in this case, there isn't. So this is an XML representation of the hierarchy of our website. Okay, so what? What can we do with it? We can do this with it. We can, now that we've created that, we can use this for two purposes. One purpose is we don't have to go and recreate all this when we design our menu, right? So I can go in here, and I can go in my master page, and I'm going to add yet another navigation to this. Uh, 
let me add a menu. All right. Now, instead of me going in and manually entering those items, I can bind this. I can create. A, I can match this up with a da data source. Now, in this case, that data source is going to be the XML file. At some point, this data source can become a database file. So I will say, what kind of data source is it? It's a new data source. I haven't done any data sources yet. Where do I get the data from? I get it from the sitemap. Specify an ID. Okay, sitemap data source one sounds good to me. <laughs> and there we go. All right. Notice that this has all of our stuff in it. And if I run this page, it has the same menu that the other one did. But it got it from the sitemap file. In fact, let me go in and put that put a label on it. I almost feel like doing an infomercial. How much would you pay for all these features? <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> and that is more, is I can put the site map path. And the sitemap path is the breadcrumbs. So I can go and I can drag that over. All right. And again, I can style this and blah, 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 blah. Now when I run this, notice I'm on the NFL page, on the home page. So my sitemap It is. I gotta change. I gotta change this. To, otherwise, the menu and the site map and the breadcrumbs are gonna get in each other's way. I should put the breadcrumbs on top of the menu, and that was confusing. So now I'm on the home page, and the breadcrumbs say I'm on the home page. Okay. I now go to the AFC page. The breadcrumbs say I'm on. I started from the NFL page and I went to AFC. I now go to AFC North. The breadcrumbs say I'm on NFL home page, AFC, AFC North. Finally, I go to the Browns page, and then it shows the path of how I got there. Yeah. Isn't, haven't I seen that where that's hidden and you hover your mouse over it and it comes up? That breadcrumb. I I I can't say what you've seen. <laughs> so, Mike, you know a lot. So yeah, you you, you might have seen that, uh, have right? You, I guess what the question was: Would you have you seen it that? Way? Have I seen it that way? Yes. I'm not sure. I I, I don't recall ever seeing that, and I'm not sure that that's a good idea. Because I kind of want this visible. I mean, it's kind of breadcrumbs that are hidden. You know, what would poor Hansel and Gretel do to get back to wherever they're going, right? I mean, if the breadcrumbs are hidden, they don't really do you a lot of good. And if you have to, like, figure out how to use it, I don't know. Would that be like a submenu then underneath your main menu, trailing along like that? Um, yeah, I mean, typically, again, if you go to... On eBay, I know that I, I just was shopping a couple nights ago, and that's how it, it told me where I was and where I came from. And yeah, so let's do that. EBay. Across the top. eBay. Okay, right here. There you go. There you go. Went to home, collectibles, and art, collectibles. And then if you didn't want it, you know. And then from there, I could go coins and paper money. Collectibles. Yeah. 
So it's like, yeah, like like that is, is kind of the thing that we mean. They're auctioning off money? What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I'll, I'll put a bid in for $50 on a $100 bill. I did like, I did like, and again, I, I, I don't say this to bring up political controversy at all, but I did like how someone said, and they were seriously suggesting this, that one of the options for resolving the, the, the budget issues and all that would be if they made like a $3 trillion coin. If they minted like one giant $3 trillion coin. And, and, and then I guess everything would be okay. And it's like, they're making this stuff up, you know. I don't know. Google it. I'm sure, I'm sure I read it on some 15-year-old kid's blog somewhere, you know, so it must be true. All right, my suggestion is to practice this, you know. The, the idea of, you know, uh, the idea of me, uh, you know, lecturing and showing you this stuff is so that you, you're not going into these things cold, right? Uh, I'll have to check the schedule to see what I want to do on Thursday. It's possible we might have some time to practice it then, but regardless of whether you do or not, uh, you know, spend some time practicing this, create the master page, clone it. Um, the master page really isn't that hard, you know, once you sort of get the hang of it, and once you realize that anything that you clone, you can only touch those content areas that correspond to the placeholders. Uh, the sitemap can be a little tricky getting the XML down, if you're not used to editing XML. Um, the, the nice thing there is it will tell you what's wrong. The bad thing is it won't tell you very specifically. It, it, it will just kind of say, this, this don't work, you know. So, but if you, if you remember some of the guidelines that I had, that, that, can, that can help you out. Um, all right, we'll see you over in lab. One question on that site map. Yeah. Uh, when you selected the, uh, this, the data source of site map, uh -huh. it's like a generic data source, but I didn't see us actually say that XML file in particular is the site map. It, it, okay, right. It assumes when we select sitemap, the assumption is is that we're talking about sitemap.xml. So if you renamed it something else, that wouldn't work. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, when we went to create a new sitemap, I don't even think it asked us for a name, did it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Either that or somewhere in the config file remembers the name of the sitemap we created. I don't know. But that, that's how. Based on the sitemap that we created, it creates it with the right name and then it looks for it. Didn't you just, you just bring such a